So you think you got what it takes to win an FBU national championship? To compete with some of the most talented, technically sound teams in the nation? The path to Naples may be beautiful, but it's not for the faint of heart. So you think you got what it takes to compete in the FBU national championship tournament? Team Maryland does. There is simply an insane amount of talent in the, in the Baltimore, Washington metropolitan area. We uh, lost three straight years to Massachusetts and now we beat them four straight years, but every year they are uh, a very tough team. Bottom line, Chad, we are the reigning eighth grade 2016 FBU national champions. We are the champions. Never had the pleasure of playing Texas. We hopefully maybe will get that opportunity this year. We learned we gotta, we gotta make sure we take care of business out of the South and normally it's either Georgia or Florida. So we gotta get past those two first and then we'll take care of Texas. We won it all last year. And there's a level of excitement right now, you know, that's just brewing through this entire Baltimore, Washington metropolitan area. Well, Seattle's a tough team. Um, they do a great job of getting the talent up on the offense and defensive lines. Um, they seem to keep a 6'4", 6'5", quarterback, too. We got another one coming this year, so um, we're going to keep our eye on Seattle. We honestly think we have a chance uh, to be better than we were last year as an 8th grade team. I say when we first came in the tournament, they said we would never win the national championship. Maryland was a basketball state. And now we hold the record for the most Final Four appearances, and we got two national championships. Three will be this year. We have a legitimate chance to come back with two national championships this year at seventh and eighth grade. Yeah! yeah. The path to Naples goes directly through the DMV. FBU National Championship Tournament, I'll see you there. Get your popcorn ready. Lockdown, shut down, no fly zone, all terminology synonymous with the position of defensive back. Whether we're talking about Darrell Revis or Dion Primetime Sanders, the position requires extraordinary talent and extreme technique. The young man we're going to introduce you to today embodies both. This is Jalen Buck McCain, and this is his FBU moment. My man. What's up, Chad? Bro, thank you for coming out here with us today, man. Thank you for being here. What's the most important thing to the mindset of a DB? Well, one is confidence. You always got to be confident. Absolutely. Because as a DB, you're going to get beat, no matter what. My mindset is, I never think I'm going to get beat. There we go. <laughs> Some people might say it's cocky, but it's, it's my confidence. Right, right. You got to have that as a DB. And if I do get beat a second time, yeah. they should probably play the lotto because they had a lucky day. <laughs> <laughs> the second thing you need, you need a great football IQ. Mm -hmm. You gotta study the game. Okay. I'm always looking for different things I can add to my repertoire. So I like to study film a lot. And I study all the small tendencies. And then the third thing you need is technique. Yeah. You always gotta work on it. I'm always in the gym, always on the field, working with my man coach Justin. Yeah. Uh, working with Elite Star Performance. Correct. And I'm always grinding, always working on the small things. Technique beats talent. Talent plus technique beats talent alone. That's what we Definitely. like to say. Will you uh, go out and kind of show me some of the, the talent and technique that it takes to be a top notch DB? Yeah, I got you. Let's do it, bro. Let's do it. Yeah, man. What I need you to first demonstrate is press cover. I got you. Yeah, it's always feet before your hands. I line up a little bit inside. All right. Because you have to have an inside level. Okay. Can't give them. You, you want to use the sideline as your friend out there. Definitely. All right. On the snap of the ball, this is what I do with my hands. All right. When I'm in press. I'm here at his top shoulder. Hand on the on the shoulder there, and that is able for you to direct him to where you want him to go. Yep. Always in trail technique. Let me see a press technique at 75%. Yep. So that right there, that's press coverage. Talk to me about uh, off man. All right, I got you. So I'm six yards off, one yard inside, inside leverage, got my outside foot up. I like to count the receiver steps to anticipate the break. Okay. So I can jump the route and take it to the house. There we go. So one, two, three, slant. All right. Four, five, curl, speed out, six, seven, in, out. Eight post corner, uh huh, and anything after eight is a go. Really? I hear you got a secret. You got a surprise. You gonna yeah, yeah, share something with me here? I got you. All right, what, what do you got? You got the catch technique. Uh huh. This is just throwing off the timing of the route, 
So it screws mm -hmm. up the time between the receiver and the quarterback. Which is important. And since you're lined up off the ball, what's the wide receiver thinking? He's thinking that I'm playing soft. That I'm just going to bail out and run with him. Uh-huh. I, I got a surprise for him. All right. Here we go. go. One, two. In the middle. Really? I'm in the chest. So we'll, we'll walk back through that. So again, the key is, is that the way that you're playing makes him feel as though you're going to play off and that you're going to get into your drop. Yep. And then you come up and surprise him. Yep. I love your technique. Jalen, we'll, we'll go ahead and speed this up. You can show it to all the people at home at 75, 100%. You ready? I got you. Show me what you got here. Set, go. My man. And that's the catch technique. I feel you, bro. Now look, you've showed all of the talent in the world already. Now that we see the technique to back it up as well, Jalen Buck McCain, it's your FBU moment. Hey, 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 hey. SBG. Let's get it. So Blake, first and foremost, thank you for having us here today, you. brother. You're a big time football player, man. You got all the accolades, all the offers and whatnot. It didn't start here though. What I want to know is, when you were a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? My dad always taught me if you put your mind to something, you can do it. Mm -hmm. And so as a kid, I started playing football at the age of like five. I always wanted to be an NFL player. I used to help him with his fantasy league football mm. and just love the game of football. You're obviously one of the top recruits in the nation in my opinion but at least on the east coast did you ever imagine that you'd make it this far at this age i mean my determination as a kid was pretty pretty good uh, mm -hmm. like i said my dad always said if you put your mind to something you mm -hmm. can do it and so i always knew i would accomplish my goals mm -hmm. but i didn't know it was going to be this quick really? as it came and so some of it's paid off yes, sir. a lot more to go <laughs> a lot more to go <laughs> Now, I know you have a really close relationship with your father, with your mother. You got three siblings out there. What do those relationships mean to Blake, the young man? My family means the world to me, from my youngest sister, Rain, to mm -hmm. the middle star and Sky, to my mom and my dad. They mean the world to me. Eric Thomas, inspirational right. speaker, said, know your why. Yes. And they're my why. Yes. They're the reason why I do what I do. And for anybody that's not familiar with Eric Thomas, when you say that they're your why, what do you mean by that? They're the reason I grind and don't party like mm. others do. Right. Because I know my why. I know what I want to do for them when I get older. You also have a family right here at oh, Pilates. Yeah. You've been a big time recruit for quite some time. This is nothing that's new for you. Right. You know, colleges are after you now, but high schools were after you earlier. A lot of people didn't anticipate you uh, coming to Pilates, you know, let's make it plain. Yeah, yeah. Gonzaga was there, St. John's was there, right. Dematha was there. You chose Pilates. You broke a mold. Why'd you do that? Because Coach N, Coach mm -hmm. Justin, Coach T, the guys, mm -hmm. um, James and Jared, they're yes. gone, but we're still going to right. get it. A lot of people said, oh, don't go to Pilates. Right. They're no good. Uh -huh. You won't get offers there. Well. We're doing pretty good. We're, <laughs> We're, pretty good. We're, pretty We're good. doing all right now. A, a championship at 17 offers later. You're doing all right for yourself. Oh, yeah. On Facebook, bro, I've seen you out uh, running in the snow. I've seen you running laps out in the woods. You have the work ethic that people write stories about. Where does that come from? It comes from my mom and dad. They always pushed me from a young kid to go get it. Mm -hmm. And so my dad, being a hardworking man, inspired me to work hard mm -hmm. and still does. Talk to me about your grind. What, what's a day in the life of Blake Quorum? Talk to me about that. I wake up around 4.30. 4.30? 4.30. Got to leave the house by 5. Uh. To get to school around 6.30 when they first open. Janitors are here, so wow. I go downstairs. I usually lift a few weights for about 30 to 45 minutes. I get ready for school. Um, after school ends, we either, as a team, hit the gym or we have study hall. And then after study hall, practice around 4.30. Ends around 6.30. Get home around 9. Mm. School work, eat, take a shower, and it's time to hit the bed. So your day starts at 4.30. Yeah. 
you get home at nine. Mm -hmm. On the days that you don't feel like doing it, because you can't feel like doing that every day. Yes, sir. What gets you up? What gets you going? My why. Mm -hmm. um, my sisters, my mom and dad, they push me to get up and go get it. Also, I know if I miss a day, there's others out there that are grinding. Absolutely. Just like me, trying to get the same, the same dream, Correct. the same focus. And so I know I have to go get it. We've looked at all of the people that are so important to your life. If you had to kind of uh, single that out, to look at who has helped Blake Corum mm -hmm. become who he is today, who would those people be? My mom and my dad, um, they're always there to lift me up. They always have my back. And without them, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. And they sacrificed so much, and my sisters, they sacrificed right. so much for me to be able to come here. And if you could take just a minute to say just a few words to those people, your mom, your dad, your sisters, what would those words be? I thank you guys, I love y'all, and it's gonna pay off. My man, Blake. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Are you ready? What up, friends, and welcome back to the Ricardo Report. As of late, I've had an opportunity to get all around the district, seeing a ton of student athletes. It feels good to be back in my studio with my main man, my good friend, Mr. Joshy e. Lloyd. Josh. Welcome back to the show, brother. Hey, it's back to be up from the JVs again. Yes, it is. Now, you have on a, a Washington Wizards jersey, and that's hey, actually... Bullets. Let's get it right. Excuse me. A Bullets jersey, and that's apropos because we're going to do a lot of talk about student-athletes, coaches right here in the district. Does that work for you? Yep, perfect. As of late, I had an opportunity to interview uh, Coach Mike London, the, uh, the more recent head coach out there at Howard University. We're going to get to Coach London in just a second. First, I want to speak to you about recruiting as a whole. Now, I know that you're someone who scouts student athletes. You've got your ear to the ground of the student athletes. You know all the coaches in the area as well. From your perspective, why is it important for college coaches to be able to recruit their background, as they say, to be able to build that fence and keep top recruits right here at home? Here on the historic campus of Howard University, this championship winning program has fallen on hard times as of late, but there's a new sheriff in town. It's time to meet head coach Mike London. Now, coach, first and foremost, man, it, it's such an absolute pleasure to be here with you. I've read so many good things about you. I want to talk about you, the man. What would your former and or present players, what words would they use to describe you? What kind of coach is Mike London? Uh, that, that's a great question. I, I always ask him about uh, operating in your strengths, and I think one of my strengths are a few of them might be, I'm a very passionate mm. and very energetic guy. And um, I, I care for the players as right. well. So um, I'm a player's coach, but at the same time, um, I, I love the game and I, I love the energy and effort that goes along with it. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that you may be uh, new as the head coach here at Howard University, but you got skin in this game. You've got a ton of experience. You're an outstanding uh, position coach. You are a dynamic defensive coordinator as well as a championship winning head coach. What have all of those steps along the path, how have they helped you to this point? You know, it's all about the people. It's all about the people you surround yourself with. Um, it's about seeing the, it's the excitement of seeing kind of that A through Z development of the young men that you're in charge of. Um, you know, all of us stand on the shoulders of someone else that, right. that help us get to where we are. And, and you find that where I am in my point of my career is it's my turn to also give back. And uh, watching the development from guys that come in not knowing where the library is uh, <laughs> and, then, but, and then leaving as educated young men, um, that's, 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 that's the biggest accomplishment, what I'm most proud of, um, to see that, that type of development. In his last head coaching job, Mike London led the Virginia Cavaliers. After a great start, his teams fell on hard times, forcing Coach London to leave his post. And we in the field life, all day life, all night life, offense life, defense life, this squad life, house call life, in the sound life, in the sound life. So, Coach, first and foremost, thank you for having us out here today, bro. Out, you yeah, you, you know, look, I, I tell everybody all the time, off the record, Pilates is my favorite team out it's there. My man. I, I don't, man. I don't want to make people upset out there. Hey, hey, you got to accept it, man. We tight, man. So we've been out here. We, we've seen kids uh, doing crazy drills, footwork out here in the hot sun. We've seen them pushing cars, pushing vans, pushing Jeeps. What's different about Pilates? What, what, what are you building out here? 
um, you know, my guys, I've really put into them, don't worry about what people think. You know, it's not about what everybody else is doing. You know, there's hard work being done. And we just got to make sure that we, we're the ones that are doing it. You're coming off of, a, off of a championship season last year. You built up this program relatively quickly, if not very quickly. How have you been able to do that? Man, I just feel like I'm different. Mm -hmm. I feel like, uh, you know, anything that I want to do, I can do it. And I don't feel like there's anybody that can stop me. It's just a process, man. And you got to stick with it. You got to stick to it. Don't allow anybody to knock you off your course. Correct. You know, whatever it is that you're trying to aim for, you got to knock everything out the way on yes, your way sir. to your goal. So that's what we do. You're beginning to bring in the top level recruits as well. People know about it. What's the next level going to look like for Pilates? Well, you know, we never concern ourselves, as I said, with what people think. And we actually have a program here now. It's, it's evolving into something, something major. I'm focused on our, our kids and developing these guys to be able to take on the world. Mm -hmm. When they're done with educating themselves in, 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 in an institution such as Pilates or right. in college, you know, just be ready for life. It was a funny little article, you know, I, they say, why, why are you guys so fired up? I said, I, I feed these guys gunpowder. There we go. You know what I mean? And, you know, it's a, it's a figure of speech, but it's just a way to let them know that what I'm giving them, Absolutely. you know, they're feeding off this and it's fire. That Absolutely. Let's look at this year. Let, let's say that we win another title this year, yeah. moving up from the MIAAB to the MIAAA. Is that something that's on your mind? I mean, that's, as a competitor, you now, Look, to... McDonald wants to know, St. Francis wants to know, hey, they is that on your hey, mind? Listen, I, I speak right here, open open mic, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm coming for the top competitors in the area, whether it be MIAAA, I do plan to move up to there. I mm -hmm. want to be the best. I don't want to ever strive to be mediocre, you know, mid-major, anything, that any, any label anybody can put on it. You know, I want to be at the top. I'm willing to do what it takes to bring Pilates. You know, let them sit on that pedestal. You want to take names. That's what I tell them. You want to be the best, you got to beat the best. You got to beat the best. Speaking of beating the best this year, what can we expect out of Pilates? Man, a great season. Um, I think we're really going to shock people this mm -hmm. year, even more so than last year. Last year was a bit of a shock just right. because people didn't expect it. Right. We just came out of nowhere. Now people are watching. They're going to be watching. Yes, sir. As they see us keep taking those uh -huh. strides, they're going to be like, wow, they're, they're, they're real. It's not a fairy tale. It wasn't they're, smoking yeah, mirrors last exactly. year. It's not smoking mirrors. It's actually um, our hard work and our dedication and, and our know how. Yes, sir. You know, we know what we're doing. Absolutely. You know, don't, don't get it twisted. People think that we're just, you know, running around and we're young. And we're, right. We know what we're doing. This didn't happen by accident. That foundation has been set and these young men have seen what it takes and the transition is amazing. Coach, thank you very much. Thank brother. you. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. As far as I'm concerned, it's not ethical mm -hmm. uh, for, the, for the simple reason. You cannot hold them back just because you want them to be successful in that. Look, listen, I, I just I have to interject, yeah. and, and we yeah. got to get out of here, but right. I have to interject because, again, I, I, I work with a, a good amount of uh, student athletes and their families who feel right. differently, and, and their argument right. is, the, the, their yeah. argument is, is that is ultimately this is going to help their academics from the perspective of their athletics taking them to school and potentially on a scholarship free of charge that, or to get potentially a better education at the high school level. Do we level, have any actual case? Do you know of? Because I don't. Do you know of any? I, I do. Okay. I do. I, I could name a few. Okay. I could name a few. What, what that, that we're it, speaking it has, about. It has a positive impact on uh, it? An, an, and I know that we, yeah. the, the producers are right. in my ear. we got to yeah. get out of here. I but, could speak yeah. to I could speak to a Blake Corum okay. who, uh, who presently attends Pilates, which is outside of the district. Yeah. I could speak to a number of student athletes at Gonzaga and or St. John's in which this has benefited because not only, not only are they better athletically but oftentimes it also helps them from a maturity perspective as well it so does. they're more mature especially when we're talking about boys because what's the main issue with boys the main That's issue true. with boys is that maturity factor so if they have another year they have an, uh, an extra year to grow to develop then maybe they're more prepared to be able to handle the rigors of being a top-notch student athlete tell you what we're gonna play a quick game of uh, toss-up as we talk a little NBA with you oh, right yeah. quick can we do that we can do we that. get out of here but not until we do that. Let's Breeze, do you got it? I got it. Okay, so if you're starting a team today, which PG do you take first? John Wall, Isaiah Thomas, 
James Harden. Mm. Uh, just the point guards that are still in the playoffs, playoffs. I see. Okay. okay. All right. No question. We're in D.C. John Wall. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's like do it. it. No question. Speed and quickness. I mean, it's not like anybody in the league can stay in front of him. Isaiah Thomas has been doing his best. But they always put Avery Bradley on him for a reason. Mm -hmm. mm, okay, you know what? I'm going against you two, and I'm actually uh -oh. going Isaiah Thomas Ooh. on this Ooh. right here. I know that we are in D.C., but in my opinion, mm. John Wall's not a winner. Wow. Whoa. We'll find out by the, the end of this season. Fire. But we'll, we'll wow. move forward with that. I'm sorry, John. Sorry, uh, D.C. D.C. Okay. Sorry, D.C. D.C. is sinking. <laughs> He's sinking. In regards Here's what I want to know, bro. Because you, you, you do a lot in basketball. Mm -hmm. Josh Elory and I, we debate all the time about this, the state of the NBA. Mm -hmm. What I want to know from you is, are NBA players, are they getting soft, bro? I mean, you got guys who need to take games off. You know, they get paid tens of millions of dollars to play a basketball game for kids. Mm -hmm. They take days <coughs> off. Are NBA players getting soft? I would say they're getting soft. I think. What would you say? <laughs> I would say that the game is evolved. Are they tired? It's is a that, long, do they need long, to come see a trainer like long, you? Can let him get two words out? I mean, it's a, you know. It's, it's a long season. Okay. It's 80, 81 games. It's 82. 82 games. You know, that's a long way, a long, long days. You got practice. You're away from your families. Hmm. You know, the referees call it tight now because they don't, they want these players. It's a, it's a business just like everything else. We want them to last. Longevity. They make tens of millions of dollars, right? Tens, tens of millions. Of millions. I, do, I, do you go to work like uh, every day? Every day. Okay. They play 82 games a year? 82. Okay, it's I'm, 365 I'm days a year. Okay, I, I get T, he's a, he's a DCSAA alum here. Uh, should should we take it easy on him? I mean, no. look, man, no. 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 <laughs> no. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. This is what we call the hot take of the day. For those of you at home, this is when we take a question that, uh, that you have sent us either on Facebook and or Twitter. We bring it right here and we discuss it on the show. Today's hot take of the day is actually anonymous coming in from Facebook. So. That means that it gets real. Yeah. The question reads this. My son attends a prominent private school in the Baltimore region. His football team is dominant on the field, but I'm concerned because not enough of the coaches look like the players. The coaching staff is primarily Caucasian and the student athletes are primarily black. They've proven to be able to help them win on the field, but I don't know that they have the experience to help them win in life. The question here is, is is it important, is it necessary for coaches to be minority, to be able to reach minority student athletes? What do we think? I think it's important. I don't think it's necessarily mandatory mm -hmm. because I think coaches, you know, if, if a player is black uh, and a coach is white, like the example you gave, that coach can still almost relate to what a player is going through. I think of Greg Popovich. Correct. And he, he, you know, he has a lot of international players, a lot of black players, and Greg Popovich speaks out on social issues, things that relate to many of his black players. But I think having a black coach, for instance, um, will add to that. They can, they can say, you know, I've been through this. I know what you're going through as a minority, as a person of color. And it's just easier to have that relationship. It, like LeBron James, Tyron Lue, LeBron says he knows what I've been through. He's been through. The, he went through the same thing I went through. So that bond just comes. So now, I, 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 I think D just kind of spoke out of both yeah. sides of your mouth. I mean, which, which, which side did you take on that one, D? Well, I, I don't think it's. As much as it is 2017, I think that we also we can't look at this with rose-colored glasses on. You know, I mean, I, I think that there can be times in which. A student athlete could make their life that much more challenging when faced with those same bullies if maybe they don't can't take it on the way that you did. Right. You no, go ahead. Well, you know, a lot of kids, especially now mm -hmm. being bullied, uh, they run into a corner. Correct. They commit suicide. Absolutely. They they're Correct. doing a lot of things. If this person it's playing ball. It's, I mean, gay people have been playing sports forever. Yep, correct. I mean, I can take you all the way back to the days of Carl Lewis mm -hmm. running track uh, in the 80s when there were a cowboy mm -hmm. fan. Right. Uh, though he was a Dallas correct. cowboy correct. who came out the closet. Correct. Now, so and then he got caught first, right. but he came out. <laughs> <laughs> See, we're, 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 we're basketball reference. We got the 24 second shot clock yeah. here. You're a student athlete, you're in high school, a teammate comes out, expresses himself. 
how do you deal deal with it? Oh, I'm just horrifying. Now, now listen, here's the deal. I, you're not right very often, but you did say <laughs> before this series started, you said that the Cavs' defense would end up being an issue. Not sure that that's uh, – uh, a really bright thing, seeing as how great the Golden State offense is, but you did, well, still I mean, did hey, say it. The Celtics yeah. were getting open shots. They just don't have the shooters to hit them. Otherwise, they might have been in the finals. Okay. Yeah. This, this series is over. It's over. Okay. I mean, I hope the Cavs get swept, actually. But I, th I, so think, do it, I. I think it might go <laughs> six, just to be generous. But um, I mean, Clay yeah. Thompson is back. I think, I think to he be had fair, a great to game be last fair, night. I, feel, uh, I saw the game last night, and, mm -hmm. and I feel as though uh, LeBron is not here yet. Okay. It hasn't dawned on him yet. Uh, are, right. you, are, and, you, are you sure? I mean, he had went out and had a triple-double. He knows the moment is right now to perform. But he won that, that one LeBron from you know? last year. He won I mean, yeah, heart. He's, he's he won no heart. He's old, what, that, you can't say there's no heart he's in, tired, with his Josh. performance. He out there. He's, he's an gassed. older man. Okay? For the first Ages. time, I saw more heart mm. in Curry Ooh. than in LeBron. I'm not going to say more heart. I will say more energy because LeBron James That's is an hard, old man. Hard, the hard old man who led the basically league. Turns he led the league energy. in minutes played for most of the season, this which guy. was unnecessary. <laughs> He's guy. going to wear down. He's a human. He might be the, one of the most impressive physical specimens Listen, we've seen. I, I think, but I anybody's going to wear I down. I think that this is what uh, what we're getting to here. But this is a conversation <laughs> that I have with uh, Josh. We'll give uh, Jaron Glover, another Ricardo Report member, a shout out out there yeah. as well because we had these conversations with them as well. People like Josh, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. millennials, people oh, like Josh oh, my goodness. get obsessed with numbers. So, T, when you say, yeah. when you say that LeBron – you didn't see from him what you want. Josh says, yeah, but he look had, at his yeah. stat line. Right, yeah. right. Not, not, not how hard he played. Not don't how hard he went. What do you mean? He story. was spent out. Okay. Mr. Ricardo, I saw Rob Gronkowski recently at WWE, and I've seen him previously partying, yet he never gets in trouble. I often wonder if my son would get the same treatment if he acted the same way. Interesting it, question. <laughs> Is there a double standard for Rob Gronkowski. Rob Manfred, the, uh, the Major League Baseball commissioner, now he says that he believes that the decline in, uh, in black participation in baseball can be reversed. Do we believe that that can be reversed? And I'm gonna tell you why, I know that you all are doing a, a great deal with it. I played, my, my father played in the Negro Leagues when he was uh, coming up, but in my community, and maybe you all can speak to this, we lived in apartments. We played baseball with a baseball bat and a tennis ball because if we hit a real ball, it might have broken a window, and I think that that's a lot of the issues. What you all are doing is helping, but can it really be turned around? 